stakeholders and participants of the Capacity Building Program on Education for Sustainable Development met in Harare on 31 January 2020 to review their change projects. Participants reviewed each other's project presentations through a checklist for the project's contribution towards relevant national policies and strategies, alignment to national and institutional curricula, and a clear ESD thrust, which will foster lifelong learning in 21st century competences. The presentations showed that there is progress towards the inclusion of ESD in school curricula and activities. So now what we are working on is to make sustainable development an accessible part of our curriculum. So the problem which has led us to have this change project is the one that I have talked about, where we are still struggling mainstreaming SDGs into our curriculum as institutions of higher learning. When children are actually learning concepts in science and technology, the media that is often used there is the kind of media that they will never come across at home. The media is only found at school. This makes life at school very much divorced from life at home. And never have we ever discovered or have we ever seen use of indigenous knowledge, instruments or tools or stories when teachers are actually teaching uh, science and technology. And therefore we are saying by incorporating IKS, we are actually bridging the gap between home or community life and school life. What is it that you can teach to such little children when you talk of uh, producing food. So I thought of this system, taking cognizance of what used to be done by our mothers or our elder sisters when they were growing plants inside the house. They were putting a flower inside a globe, isn't it? Yes. There was no soil in that particular flower, but the flower would grow and grow and grow. But we now need to move on. Flowers, of course, they are okay. Horticulture, if someone wants to go in horticulture, they can do this and have something which is better. Then the PVC pipes. This is lettuce, this is the hydroponic system. The problem exists. Um, besides the availability of uh, vast, a lot, and diverse knowledge that can be harnessed uh, from nature. Um, a, we, when we look at, uh, uh, in this case, we're going to mainly focus on the biosphere reserves and uh, uh, what is availed by nature and our indigenous cultural heritage and the practices in the teaching and learning, which can be used. Right? What's the idea which we, the, 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 which we found is that Science itself might not be um, a very the, the, the difficult part, but uh, it's like uh, there is no access to the knowledge, the science knowledge. But we want to access it through use of the available resources in nature and the available resources in the cultural heritage. Thereby 
So we found that anchoring science teaching and learning on nature and indigenous knowledge enhances quality, right? In terms of relevance, right? Because we have found, we have seen that a science might seem to be difficult because what we are teaching is is not relevant to the philosophy of life of of of, of the people. And the students back for assignment will also span the following uh, SDGs. Uh, poverty, hunger, healthy, and well-being. Uh, I have chosen these from students' sample work. They were talking of poverty, they were talking of hunger, they were also talking of healthy and well-being. It will also address elements of inequality, water energy, energy, water and energy, energy, decent work. Then we are also looking at the Education 5.0, which is also encompassing research. We equip teachers with the competence-based skills so that they fit well in schools. Because you maybe know, nowadays there is this talk that the teachers that are being produced in colleges these days, you know, people are saying a lot about the college teachers that we are training out these days. So we are trying to run away from that. Also, we also want to fulfill the ministry's policy of education 5.0. We want to fulfill the SDG 4 of promoting quality education in teachers' colleges and primary schools. Because when we are looking at quality education, we are also looking at the end product. Who is the child? The peer responses and reviews showed that most projects met the standard set for a successful and quality change project initiative. I'm particularly interested in that because we are carrying out uh, a project on how we can use IKS in assessment practices so that we have um, assessment practices that are also informed by IKS so that uh, I mean, if we get involved in what we are doing I think we can share a lot of ideas. This project in one way or the other, with those participating schools, enrich their school-based syllabus. Yeah, we are still following the national competence-based, but those four schools, is, is their school, they have their school-based syllabus enriched because of, yes. There are six is more focused, I think it's the area where we zero down on the learning domains when they do, when they produce those materials. However, the fostering of lifelong education and interdepartmental engagement and communication within the institution was not clearly brought to light in most project presentations. They may need to face the zero down on their institution because it's quite big. It has other sections before they want to encroach onto other institutions. They must have a firm document that they would be leaning on when they want to include others, which would convince other institutions that it's the way to go. Suggestions were given by peers and stakeholders to help improve each project so that all these projects are in line with the intended goal of integrating education for sustainable development into the education system. You, 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 you focused more on the assessment, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Whilst you are improving on that assessment, I think you indicated that you, you haven't started drafting the assessment too yet. But I think it's important earlier on somebody mentioned trying out. Mm -hmm. So you could use this as a trying out phase before you go full scale assessing the students with information that they have not learned. We can help teachers to be able <coughs> to teach very well. And they can in, in, incorporate that. But the struggle then comes to the assessment component. Is it possible that in your capacity development with the teachers, could you think about that whole 
line, the, the line across from the planning to the identification, the planning of integrating the two uh, knowledges, the teaching and the assessment, so that it becomes one complete line. And then your um, assessment at the, at the end, or your review, is reviewing that whole process and saying, is it possible to implement this in the classroom? The participants were urged to build evidence towards their projects so as to approach examination and education assessment boards for policy changes on assessment types and to also encourage education for sustainable development inclusion in the curriculum. Whoever comes, if he's promoted to be vice chancellor, whoever comes, uh, we'll pick, where is the curriculum outline? We'll pick out this thing and start to see how best can I teach critical thinking and so forth and so forth. So apart from the practices, apart from the passion, let's say the documented evidence to say this was adopted by Senate. And these are things now that we are going to be presenting in April to say at Bindura University, curriculum transformation was done in this way. Uh, policies, the curriculum policies changed, teaching material transformed, practice, pedagogic practice, proof of everything. You join hands with the ZIMSEC, you come up with assessment framework for continuous assessment. So I'm encouraging each one of you here uh, to try and find ways so that the transformation is institutionalized. Mr. J. Juro from Zimbabwe Schools Examination Council presented on the continuous assessment framework for education. Assessment of learners is something that we value at ZIMSEC. All along, we have been looking at summative examinations, like you got the results of your children last week and the week before. Those are summative examinations. But the new way of thinking as we go forward is continuous assessment, because the competence-based curriculum requires that we assess learners as they will be carrying out different tasks in their classrooms. So continuous assessment is there to capacitate us, or it is there to make sure that we test certain skills that are not captured by some examinations. Those are very short exams. Two in a two hour examination, you may not be able to tell whether the candidate or whether the learner is going to be in the career in life whether the learner has exhibited critical thinking skills. You can't do that in a summative examination. And that is why we have CA, because it is the way to go. It was noted in the presentations of change projects that education assessment does not assess the day-to-day -day skills and abilities of students for 21st century competences. Assessment is always in summative. But in this 21st century, traditional approaches to assessment and reporting are out of stage. Because we lose a lot of learners through these additional assessment programs, uh, programs, like the examinations. There are a lot of children who are lost out because we will have failed to capture certain competencies that they also have. CA can capture those competencies, and we can make use of all the learners who will, whom we will take on board. Julia Hayes, UNESCO Regional Office Education Program Specialist, gave the last remarks as she commended the participants for showing passion and energy towards their change projects. I think forums like this one where we learn together and we give each other feedback and inputs are quite helpful. Participants of the Capacity Building Program also applauded UNESCO and its partners for facilitating the ease of the move towards curriculum transformation. We really take this honor to applaud UNESCO for this initiative. Besides involving us as participants, you have uh, eased our task of facilitating curriculum transformation, which we refer to as a syllabus review, in line with uh, Education 5.0 and the competence-based curriculum. You have also assisted in creating synergies with other tertiary institutions such as Buse, Zeg, Heat, 
and above all Rhodes University, the, the, which are on the regional platform, uh, University of Botswana, and uh, Yuna. I think this will actually go a long way in transforming teacher education in Zimbabwe as well as in the southern region. Capacity building for teacher education is a global priority under the Education for Sustainable Development Agenda 2030 program. The, the program is running in 11 countries in Southern Africa, as you can see here. 2019, we're going to be Botswana and Namibia. And in 2020, it's about Zambia, South Africa, and Lesotho. In 2021, Tanzania, Malawi, Eswatini. Then the last year, the Mozambique and Angola. So we are amongst the countries that are benefiting from this program. And um, the aim has been specified or explained in different ways. I mentioned the principal has said it as well, to say the whole idea is to support uh, teacher educators in early childhood education, in primary and secondary education, in technical and vocational education to respond to regional sustainable development concerns and opportunities. And these are captured very well, these concerns and opportunities are captured very well from the Africa 2063 Agenda and the S17 SDGs.